Hello everyone. Today we are starting the lecture number thirty-eight. That is all about the pre-shipment and post-shipment finance. After this lecture, you will be able to understand what are the pre-shipment finance and what are the post-shipment finance, and what are the difference between pre-shipment finance and post-shipment finance. Okay. Clear? Yeah. So let us start. the starting from here introduction export finance is a short term working capital finance allowed to an exporter an exporter may avail financial assistance from any bank provided following two requirement are satisfied timely availability of credit and cost of the fund should be affordable so before that we have to be know about what is all about the trade finance what is all about the trade finance so what is trade finance trade finance refers to financing for, for the purpose of trade which include both domestic as well as international trade trade transaction is often financed by financial intermediaries like banks in the form of letter of credit insurance export order etc a trader exporter look forward to an importer to prepay for the goods traded the importer want to mitigate the risk and for that he or she demand the exporter to document the goods shipped in this way what actually bank do bankings and financial institutions may provide support in form of letter of credit clear further we will more talk about the pre shipment finance and what is the meaning of pre shipment finance pre shipment finance refers to the finance refers to the credit extended to the exporters prior to the shipment of goods for the executions of the export order and the, it will talk about the post shipment post shipment finance refers to the credit extended to the exporters after the shipment of goods for meeting working capital requirement it will talk about the purpose what is the purpose of a pre shipment finance and post shipment finance it is granted for as a purchase processing manufacturers or packing or packaging of the goods as defined by the central bank of the country in terms of india which we are reserve bank of india the short term finance is extended for meeting working capital requirement in medium and long term for export and deferred payment we will talk about the what are the amount be finance generally the amount of packing credit doesn't exceed the fobs free on board values the goods to be exported or the domestic values whichever is less post shipment finance can be given to the extent of 100% of the invoice value of the goods exported clear it will talk about the beneficiaries it is extended to the indian exporters or deemed exporter which is actually belongs to the india it is extended to the indian exporters as well as the overseas importers also if we will talk about the forms of the finance it is extended in the following terms and condition following form just like a extended parking credit loan parking credit home secured secure secured shipping loan it is extended to the following forms discounting of export bills against undrawn balances against retention money against goods on consignment it will talk about the period of credit it is granted for a maximum period of 180 days and can be further extended for a period of 90 days with the prior permission of reserve bank of india it can be granted for short medium and long term for periods ranging from 90 days to 12 years depending on the nature of the exports if we will talk about the what are the documentary evidence we are requiring whenever we are talking about a trade finance of pre shipment or post shipment finance it is extended against the documentary evidence of confirmed export order or letter of credit it is extended against the evidence of 
shipping documents certified by the custom authorities if we will talk about the lending institutions in india who are actually providing certain pre shipment finance and post shipment finance assisting to finance the their businesses it is generally extended by the commercial banks in india short term post shipment credit is extended by the commercial bank while medium and long term credit are extended by the exim bank clear so what are the export finance guidelines reserve bank of india which we have certain trade control control regulations icc ec dc of india limited and fdi guidelines and rules stages of export finance pre shipment finance financial assistance extended for the execution of export order from the date of receipts of export order till the date of shipment that's included in a pre shipment finance and further if we will talk about more about the pre pre shipment finance pre shipment finance include any finance that an exporters can access before they send goods to the buyers once the business receive a confirmed order from a buyer it has an obligations to deliver the finished goods this may involve manufacturing or procurement and working capital finance is often required to fund wages production cost in one ga raw material exporters can assess the different types of working capital finance trade and receivables finance trade finance is essentially a loan where the goods exported are the main form of security or collateral in the case of a default the lender can seize the goods lenders will often fund up to the 80% of total value of the goods but this can vary depending on the lender and the risk involved in the exporting the goods for example if there is a low demand for the goods lender may not be able to resell them therefore the risk to the lender is higher and they may only be willing to finance a small percentage of the values if there is a huge risk involved so nobody is going to provide the full funding for the project we will talk about the inventory or warehouse financing often lenders require the finished goods to be kept in a warehouse or other secure locations the inventory can then be used by the business as a collateral a lender will provide short term working capital or loan against the collateral and warehouses or inventory financing is often used to top up existing credit lines we further we will talk about the pre payment pre payment finance pre payment finance is subtly different to the trade finance in this case the buyers will take out a loan specifically for the purpose of paying the seller in advance of the goods being shipped the finance contract usually state that buyers will pay back the loan once the goods have been received and the sold on sometimes buyer don't have money buyers are importing any goods and services from a from respective country so what the buyer can do they can ask for the loan and they can make certain contract to when the goods being sold will revert your will revert you back your money the process ensure quick repayment and allow a lender to clearly link their funding to the trade cycles this is all about the pre shipment finance further we will talk about the post shipment finance financial assistance from the date of shipment to the date of realization we will further talk about the post shipment finance post shipment finance includes any finance that an exporter can assess after they send goods to a buyer without a fiancee the exporters would wait for the goods to arrive and wise to be raised and the payment terms period typically 30 days it can be 60 or it can be 90 additional days financing can accelerate the payment to the exporter so that payment received at the goods are sent typically loaded on the grid post shipment finance can operate in a number of ways through letter of credit trade finance invoice factoring or receivables discounting selling the invoice or receipt documents so types of pre shipment finance parking credit advance against charges draft representing advance payment 
So what are the types of precipitant finance? We have a very few types of precipitant finance. So we have a, apart from this, we have a, some certain other types of recipient finance also. First is extended parking credit loan. Extended parking credit loan. What is this meaning? It is extended to the those exporters rated as first class exporters by the commercial banks on the basis of their credit worthiness. It is granted for making advance payment to the suppliers for acquiring goods to be exported. Such advance is generally clean, that is, granted the loans to without any documentary evidence for a very short periods, short periods of time. That is called extended parking credit loan. For second is a parking credit loans. It is extended for the acquisitions of raw materials. Sometimes you are receiving certain order from the buyers, but you don't have product and services. What actually we have to do? We have to be acquire the raw materials. After that, what we can do? We can uh, manufacture those goods and services. Clear? So, clear? Okay, so uh, it is extended for the acquisitions of raw material, working process, or finished goods means for export. The goods so acquired are treated as a security for sanctioning of loan. Under this facility, the exporters are required to execute a deed in a favor of the bank, while the possession of the goods remains with the exporter. Third, we will talk about parking credit loans. That is all about the pledge. It is extended for the acquisition of the seasonal raw material or raw material in order once lot. Export takes place in due course after processing as per shipping and delivery schedule agreed upon by the overseas buyer. The documents relating to the raw materials are placed with the bank while the positions remains with the exporters. Clear? Any doubt? Without the, as we have been already told you about the parking credit loan place, now we are uh, starting the secure shipping loan. Secured shipping loan. What is all about the secure shipping loan? What I've been told you, I've been told you parking credit lay, banking credit loan, extended parking credit loan. Okay, so what is all about the secured shipping loan? Secured shipping loan can be obtained once the goods are handed over to the transport operator or clearing and forwarding agent for shipment. It is released against the lorry receipts or railway receipt. It is extended for a, for a very short duration, considering the time taken for the dispatch of the goods to the port and completion of the shipping and custom formalities. Okay, clear? Clear? Further, we will talk about Further, we will talk about advance against red cross or letter of credit or check. So, further, we will talk about the, if the exporter desires to obtain parking credit, then he should request the importers to obtain red cross LC. Red cross letter of credit authorizes the local bank to grant advances to exporters to meet their working capital requirement for the processing of export order. Such advances are guaranteed by the issuing bank. Next is the advance against checks or draft. 
if the exporter has received direct payment from abroad by means of checks or draft, then the bank may grant expo credit at a consistent rate to the exporters having a good trade record. Till the time of the realization of the proceeds of the checks or draft, the banks, however, must satisfy themselves that the proceeds are against on export order. Further, we will talk about the packing credit facilities for consultancy service. In case of the consultancy service, exporters don't involve physical movement of goods out of Indian custom territory. In such case, precipient finance can be provided by the bank to allow the exporters to mobilize resources like technical personnel and training them. Next is racking credit facility. Racking credit facility should deem exporters. Clear? Deemed export made to multilateral fund added projects and programs. Under the order secured through global tender for which payment will be made in a free foreign exchange also eligible for consistent rate of interest facility both at pre and post supply stages. Next is the PCFC. What is all about the PCFC? PCFC, Precipient Credit in a Foreign Currency. Exim Bank, Exim Bank stand for Export Import Bank of India, has introduced a scheme for Indian exporters to enable them to avail pre-shipment credit in a foreign currency to finance the cost of imported input for manufacture of export product. The credit period for an advance under PCFC can't exceed more than 180 days. India. Now, types of now we have been already told you about types of pre-shipment finance. Now we are going to tell types of post-shipment finance. So we have a numerous number of post-shipment finance also. Export bill, advance against bill, sent on the collection basis, advance against export on consignment basis, advance against undrawn balances, advance against duly drawback receivables from government. First is, first is export bills purchase. Export bills, non letter of credit bills in, is used in terms of sale contract. Order may be discounted or purchased by the banks. It is used in indisputable international trade transactions. And the proper limit has to be sanctioned to the exporters for a purchase of export bill facility. Further, we'll talk about export bill negotiated, that is called export bill N. Export bill P, matlab, P means export bill purchase. Export bill negotiated means the risk of payment is less under the LC. At the issuing bank makes sure the payment, the risk is further reduced. If a bank guarantees the payment by confirming the letter of credit, because of the inbound security available in this method, banks often become ready to exchange the finance against bill under the LC. However, there rise to major risk factor for the banks. The risk of non-performance for the exporters when is unable to meet its terms and conditions. In this case, the issuing banks don't honor the letter of credit. The bank also faces the documentary risk where the issuing bank refused to honor its commitment. So it is important for the negotiating bank and the lending bank to properly check all the necessary documents before submission. Now, next is advance against bill sent on collection basis. What, did, what is this meaning? Advance against bill sent on collection basis.
further we will talk about the advance against bills sent on collection basis that means bills can only be sent on collection basis if the bills drawn under the letter of credit have some certain discrepancies sometimes exporter request the bill to be sent on the collection basis anticipating the strengthening of foreign currencies why we are doing why we are requesting the bill just because of we are anticipating foreign currencies will be appreciated banks may allow advance against this collection bills to an exporters with a consistent rate of interest depending upon the transit period in case of dp and transit periods plus assessment period in case of assessment bill the transit period is from the date of acceptance of export documents at the bank branches for collection not from the date of advance i hope you have clear idea about advance against bill sent on collection basis advance against export on consignment basis means banks may choose to finance when the goods are exported on consignment basis at the risk of the exporters for sale and eventual payment of sale proceeds to him by the consignee however in this case bank instruct the overseas bank to deliver the documents only against trust receipt undertaking to deliver the sale proceed by specified date we should be within the prescribed date even if according to the practice in certain trade a bill for part of the estimated values be drawn in advance against the export in case of export through approved indian owned warehouses abroad the time limit for realization is maximum 15 month clear again i'm just trying to explain you what is all about the advance against export on consignment basis banks may choose to finance when the goods are exported on the consignment basis at the risk of the exporters for sale and eventual payment of sale proceeds to him by the consignee however in this case bank instruct the overseas bank to deliver the documents only against start trust receipt undertaking to deliver the sale proceed by the specified date we should be within the prescribed date He, even if according to the practice in certain trade a bill for a part of the estimated value is drawn in advance against the export in case of export through approved indian owned warehouses abroad the time limit for realization is maximum that is called 15 month further we will talk about the advance against undrawn balances what this is meaning it is very common practice in export to leave a small part undrawn for payment or the adjustment due to the differences in the rate weight quality etc banks do finance against the undrawn balances if undrawn balances is in a conformity with the normal leave of balances left undrawn undrawn in the particular line of the export subject to a maximum of 10% percent of export values will further will talk about will try to more under, understand the un, an undertaking is also obtained from the exporter that he will within the 6 month from the due date of payment or the date of shipment of the goods whichever is earlier surrender the balance proceed of the shipment last is advance against claims of the duty drawbacks advance against claims of duty drawback what is this meaning duty drawback is a type of discount given to the exporters in his own countries every country they are giving certain types of discount to their own export Just because of the motions of export and import business, 
this discount is given only if the in-house cost of production is higher in relation to the international price. This type of financial support helps the exporter to fight successfully in the international market. In such situations, banks grant advances to the exporters at a lower rate of interest for a maximum period of 90 days. These are granted only if other types of export finance are also extended to the exporters by the same bank. After the shipment, the exporter lost their claim supported by the relevant document to the relevant government authorities. These claims are proceeds, an eligible amount is disbursed after making sure that the bank is authorized to receive the claim amount directly from that concern government authorities. Now, what is parking credit loan? Parking credit loan. IE code, that is called, what are the documents which we are requiring whenever we are asking for the parking credit loan? Importer exporters code is required, sale of ECGC, RBA caution list, sanctions limit, confirmed order letter of credit, turnover, inco terms, quantum of the loans. Before that, we should have basic idea about what is all about the parking credit in export business or parking credit loans. There are numerous number of the questions arises in our mind. What is parking credit in the export? How does parking credit help exporters? Is parking credit mean for only packaging of packing of export goods? How parking credit is being disbursed under the export? How to avoid packing credit by exporter? The packing credit is nothing but a precipient finance given to the exporter with a low interest rate to the boost export. Packing credit is given by the authorized banks by the instructions of Reserve Bank as a government policy to promote exporters to earn foreign currencies to strengthen the financial status of the country. If we'll talk about the Reserve Bank of India cost list yeah, as per the instructions of Reserve Bank, so no exporter shall suffer the want of funds for exports. Government promotes all the exporters to earn foreign exchange and exchange the maximum support to encourage the export. Parking credit loan is a precipient finance given by the banks to procure raw material and arranging the goods ready for the exports. Banks provide parking credit against the stock of the raw material or finished goods also in certain cases. The parking credit is a separate finance given to the exporters, not connected with any limit of other loan given by the bank. A separate packing credit loan account is open for each exporter separately if needed. Once the amount of the shipment received from the overseas buyer, the said packing credit amount will be adjusted by the bank and close the loan under the said export order. Further, whenever we just want to take the or obtain the packing credit loan facility, what the exporter has to approach their bank with the export order. And bank official visit the exporter's factory. What is all about the export factory? They will visit the physically and get convinced on the stock of the good and assess the value with the export order. Packing credit loan is a one of the waste financial assistance by the bank to promote the export trade. Goods must be freely exportable, should not be banned or canalized or restricted. Foreign trade policies, destination country, we have to be concerned about period of the advance and disbursement of the PCL. Further, we'll talk about the packing credit loan. We'll be more concerned about the liquidations, buy products, parcel domestic sale. We will talk about the PCL. PCL is all about the packing credit limit. Parking credit limit is provided to an exporters for financing the purchase, processing, manufacture, or packing of goods prior to shipment working capital expenses. 
So we will talk about the, what are the features of the PCL or parking credit limit. It's provided to an exporter for financing the purchase, processing the manufacture or packing of goods prior to shipment of battery capital expenses. Period of the facility is based on the export cycle up to six months. We will talk about the eligibility who can take the benefit of the PCL. Applicants shall be an exporter and all corporates having a turnover of rupees 500 crore and ever. So these are the these are the things we have to be gone through while talking about the PCL liquidations, wire product, parcel domestic sale, export of Deloitte and defected cakes, running account facility, substitution of buyer, telescopic rate of interest. Clear? Pre-shipment and post-shipment finance may be provided to exporters of all the 161 credible services covered under the general agreement on trading services that is called GATS, which belongs to the WTO, where payment for such services received in foreign free foreign exchange is stated as a chapter three of foreign trade policy 1914. As we know, supply of the export of services is very ticklish term under the GST, we will talk about, because as we know, we have started improving the GST in India. Sometimes a transaction seems to be supply of export of services, but according to the provisions of the GST, this transaction shall not be treated as export of services. Every supply of services made to a person belonging to outside India and payment also received in convertible foreign exchange cannot be termed a supply of export of services. We'll talk about the export of services means supply of any services. The supplier of services located in India. The recipient of services is located outside the India. The place of supply of services outside India. And further, the payment for such services has been received by the supplier of services in convertible foreign exchange or in Indian rupees wherever permitted by the Reserve Bank of India. The supplier of services and the receipt of services are not merely establishment of distinct person according to the explanation in one section A. So further, we will talk about the registered person mainly think that supply of services provided to a foreign national person, payment received in a convertible foreign exchange, shall be treated as a supply of export of services. But under the GST provisions, this is not the only criteria to establish the export of services. Post-shipment export credit. Post-shipment export credit. What is post-shipment export credit? Post-shipment ex export credit is extended to the exporters by the banks with a low interest rate till the realization of their export proceed. Post-shipment loan help export to get financed without waiting amount of sales from their overseas buyer. And post-shipment credit means any loan or advances granted or any other credit provided by a bank to an exporter of goods or services from India from the date of extending credit after the shipment of goods or rendering of services to the date of realization of export proceed as per the period of Realization prescribed by the FET and include any loan or advances granted to an exporter in consideration or in the security of any duty drawback allowed by the government from time to time. Banks serve the low interest rate to the exporter under post shipment credit based on the guidelines of Reserve Bank. Since the current instructions of FED. The period prescribed for realization of export proceed is 12 months from the date of shipment. And if the amount has not been realized from the overseas buyer within the stipulated period, banks crystallize this export bills with the commercial interest rate. And the liquidation of the post shipment credit, normal transit period that is called 60 days, a since will fixed due date. 
TT reimbursement under the LC, that is the letter credit, overdue bills, extension of the time limit can't be moved, crystallizations, payment of compensations to the export in the ratio of delayed credit. We will talk about the how many types of post shipment credit are there. First is export bills purchased or discounted or negotiated. Once after the export by completing necessary export formalities, the exporter obtain necessary export documents from various authorities like carrier of the goods, custom department and other agencies. The exporter submit bill of lading just like the airway bill, invoices, parking list, certificate of origin, and other necessary export document to the bank. The bank extends the post shipment credit by discounting or purchasing of such export bills with a consistent rate of interest. Once after realization of the export bills from the overseas buyer, the said amount is credited to such post shipment credit. The amount from overseas buyer doesn't realize with the stipulated period Banks may crystallize the export bills by charging commercial rate of interest. Advances against bills for collection. As explained earlier, if the exporter doesn't want to discount purchase export bill, obviously we arrange to send export bills for collection. In this case, Banks can allow a portion of export bills in advance against bills for collection with a concessional rate of interest. Once after the realization of the export bills from overseas buyer, the said amount is credited to such post shipment credit. If amount from the overseas buyer doesn't realize within the stipulated time period, banks may crystallize such export bills by charging commercial rate of interest up to the extended of amount advance. Yeah. As you know, government of each country, not even if we are talking about the India, in every government of each country promote the export to earn the foreign currency to risk their respective currencies. One of the government support to exporters is duty drawback scheme. Duty drawback is dispersed by the custom department after submission of necessary export documents to the customs. Banks provide advances against such duty drawback received from the custom department. The exporter submit with his bank necessary export documents and such eligibilities on duty drawbacks. Bank after, after the satisfaction of such eligibilities sanctions advance amount against the duty drawback to the exporters. However, in the nowadays, the custom department disperse the duty drawback within a least period of time, subjected all documents are in the order. Clear? Export credit in a foreign currency is financed in a foreign currency is a competitive rate, interest linked to the Nevol, London Interbanks rate or Euro Interbank rate. Choice of the currency, whether it is a US dollar, Great Britain pound, Japanese yen, or Euro. Export to the ACU countries are also covered sources of funds for banks. Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India Limited. What actually they do? Export Credit, Gar Car Credit Guarantee Corporation of India is a totally government enterprise. It is under the ownership of the Ministry of Commerce Industry, Government of India, and the head office is based on the Mumbai as we know. They are basically providing certain credit export, certain providing export credit insurance support to the Indian exporters. It is the topmost official designated as a chairman and managing director with central civil servant. What actually they do? They are providing a range of credit risk insurance covers to the exporters against losses in export of credit goods and services as well as. They also offer the guarantees to the banks and finance institutions to enable exporters to obtain barter facilities from them. They also provide certain overseas investment insurance to the Indian companies investing the joint venture abroad in a form of equity or loan in the advances. We will talk about what the facilities they are providing. 
they offer the insurance protections to exporters against the payment risk provide guidance in export related activities they are makes available information of different countries within the own credit ratings make it easy to obtain export finance from bank finance institutions assist exporters in recovering bad debts provide information on credit worthiness of overseas buyers they are whole turnover packing credit guarantee whole turnover post shipment guarantee and individual post shipment guarantee we will talk about software export the guidelines issued by the rbi classifies software and it in the four categories software services project services software product and packages and it related services so as we know more than 65% of indian export are from software industries and more than 60% of software exports are to usa and around 25% to the euro india has a large pool of trained scientific manpower who are mainly english speaking and world software industry is dominated by the english as the main languages thank you thank you so much for joining goodbye take care